These are the five worst ball python morphs to invest in if you're looking to make a financial return in this industry. And you'll definitely want to stick around to the end because the snake coming in at number one is by far the worst one to get into from an investor's point of view. So without further ado, let's get right into this. I just wanted to preface this video by saying this is not professional financial advice. And I also want to make it super clear that we are not against any of the morphs listed in this video. In fact, Josh and I worked with several of them that are featured. We simply made this list based off of our observations, as well as price history on morph market, supply and demand. And we also noticed that a lot of the animals that are listed on morph market that happen to carry these genes do tend to sit a little bit longer. In any event, let's get right into number five. The first gene on the list is the pastel. At the time of this recording, there's about 8,000 ball pythons on morph market that have pastel, which is pretty insane considering there's about 24,000 ball pythons total. So one third of the ball pythons have pastel gene in them. Although they tend to look really good as babies, pastel is notorious for browning out and mudding up combinations as it ages. For the sake of transparency, Josh and I definitely do work with the pastel genes and we are trying to find the best combinations to put it in. So far we found Desert Ghost be a saving grace for this combination. Although there's several lines known to keep pastel looking good throughout its life, your best bet with this gene is to do just that and pair it with the Desert Ghost. Coming in at number four is the albino. It takes this place for a couple of reasons. If you try to stack too many genes into the albino, it can be extremely tough to identify, and therefore the scope of this project is pretty limited. We've sold several albinos in the past, and what we found is that because this is a very commonly kept gene, a lot of the snakes that we sell that have albino sell at the pet keeper's price point. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, unless of course you're looking at it from an investor's standpoint, then there is something wrong with that because there's definitely a price cap to this project. If you're adamant on working with an amelanistic gene that also is advantageous from an investment standpoint, then a really good solution to that is to work with the lavender albino. It will yield very similar outcomes. However, there's a lot more contrast in the lavender albino and it's a lot easier to identify combinations. So the demand for this project is a lot higher. Coming in at number three is another line of albino, the caramel albino. It's a visually appealing gene. However, it has two very unfortunate genetically linked defects that cause it to come number three on our list. The first being fertility issues. Carmel albinos are prone to fertility issues and though there are several problems with that, the most problematic from an investor standpoint is that obviously you're not gonna be getting a return on investment due to a lack of fertile eggs. The second defect, which is more problematic, is spinal kinking. The offspring are prone to spinal kinking, which has some serious implications on the quality of life for obvious reasons. A very good alternative to that is using Ultramel. You get a lot of very similar combinations from Ultramel, and you have none of the associated genetic defects. Coming in at number two is the spider gene. The reason why the spider is the second worst investment on our list is because it is controversial. As many of you know, there's several genetic issues linked with the spider gene. The first being a neurological condition called the wobble. It can range from light to severe, and in extreme cases, it could even cause the snakes to display the super unnatural corkscrew type behavior. In addition to this, the super form of the spider is lethal, meaning if you have two copies of the spider, the egg won't make it through the incubation process. So that is another genetic issue that plays into this debate. Now we're not gonna go into the debate of morality because this is indeed a video about bad investments in terms of genes. That being said, we'll conclude by saying it is just a very poor investment to make. And if you are adamant about working with the spider gene, we suggest working with spiders that show the least amount of wobble. Otherwise, if you can avoid it from an investor standpoint, a better pick would be the spot nose because it provides the pattern reduction and the color lightening that the spider is known for. And the gene coming in at number one, the worst of all genes to invest in is the desert. This is not to be confused with the desert ghosts. The desert is actually a dominant gene that cleans up color and pattern, but the fatal flaw with this gene is that all female deserts are infertile. This project showed a lot of promise when it was first introduced, but unfortunately the early investors were burned pretty bad once this fertility issue was discovered. And as it sits right now, there's only three deserts available on Morph Market, which is super low. They range from $250 to $450, which I'm honestly surprised they're that high. That being said, they're not viable for the breeder market, and therefore you're looking at a very horrible return on investment. Unfortunately, it's not an investment project. It's not viable for an investment project, but luckily we do have a very good alternative for this gene, which is the Desert Ghost. That does it for our five worst genes to invest in. Like always, we love to hear your feedback, so definitely leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment down below. 
Also, if all the stars align, we will be back next week with our first clutch cutting of the 22 season. This is a clutch you will not want to miss, so definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh,